All right. So full body um, toning, low impact workout. That's where we're starting. And um, I don't know if it feels, I, I just realized that um, ALEXA kicked off some of my light. So um, I'm going to just leave them off because there's so much light coming in. We're going to start with our rhythmic limbering. So step, touch, side to side. And I had a few minutes this morning to, I came down and I sat up early. And then I thought, you know, it's been a long time since I've done a Facebook live or a YouTube live. And so I set my phone up and I started tinkering. And then I went into, um, I went into YouTube live. And so I had to log in for the class because on my laptop, I can set it for um, live but yet it will allow me to, to actually play it back on a certain date. So it's saying that it's live, but it's not actually going live. Tap side to side, it's just in record mode, okay? Anywho, <laughs> it doesn't really give you time to like, it's a strange thing. You go live and you're actually live. It doesn't allow you to, to, to test your settings. So I exited out of that step, touch side to side. And then I'm like, well, let me go to my phone. <laughs> so I had my phone set up, the laptop set up and the two programs from my phone and laptop don't actually communicate. And only one of them can handle the mic because you can't be plugged in Bluetooth to, to the same thing on multiple devices. And I thought like, how do people, how are they doing this? <laughs> so anyway, I did, um, I, set it up and then I blocked out the video, right? So I, because I wanted to actually test my settings and um, yeah, I didn't figure it out. I spent about a half an hour this morning tinkering around and I'm back to where I started in a very perplexed state going, I don't know how to have these two gadgets communicate under Zoom platform of class and YouTube live. <laughs> so here, pull it up, pull it up. And I was tempted to try it again right before class. But you have to, because both gadgets aren't running on this, one of the programs will pick up all of the ambient noise. And I, that's what I was hearing when I was doing like my little test, even though I was live. Um, thankfully, I don't have an audience. <laughs> so, but um, I just, I don't even, I don't even, there's so many things that perplex me about technology and how these systems operate that I've got to do some discovery <laughs> because the thing is, is I thought step touch, both arms swinging with the legs. So when I upload from Zoom to YouTube, I feel like I can have this conversation right now because we're just into rhythmic limbering, all right? Hold your arms, swing them the other way. Okay. And rhythmic limbering is just you kind of putting your body on autopilot. Everything is loose. And to have the movement be simplistic so that you can just follow along, right? I'm going to back up. So we're going to go into the little heel taps. And you're going to take your arm side and center. Heel tap to the center arm. So now this might feel a little bit more complicated, but still easy. Four more. So my thinking was, <laughs> if I could actually tape and upload the video, that it would 
bypass the time that I spend in another program, which is called Canva. So when I take my Zoom class, right, the recorded Zoom class, this is all the behind the work that you guys don't know anything about that I'm getting ready to share with you, push pull. Zoom produces the recorded product, they then send it to me. And when you guys go to YouTube, it is a different product that you see on YouTube. It is an edited version. And the edited version puts it into HD. So I use a program called Canva that I have to download my Zoom video to Canva. It then takes however long hours to <laughs> heel tap. It takes hours for it to take it from SD to HD, which is then what I upload to YouTube, which takes hours in order for me to get one class done a week. That is not your problem. I'm trying to figure out, is there a way to bypass some of the steps to still get a good quality video. And I don't think there is. <laughs> so anyway, that's where my morning started. And it's only eight o'clock. <laughs> so you know that I've been up and at them for a while. Push, pull, push, pull. All right. It's just your basic rock step. Give me marching feet. Other leg, forward rock, step back. Are you stepping to me or away from me? Does it matter? Do you feel? This is what I noticed when I took my mom's um, class is that I was, when my mom was stepping forward, I was stepping back so that we were like this seesaw. And then I looked around and everybody else in class, when my mom was stepping forward, they were stepping forward into her. And I thought, there's one thing, marching feet. It's like I spy with my little eye, the one thing that looks out of place. And it was me. And I thought, huh, I wonder what you guys do. Pull it up back to high knees. All right, so now you're doing high knees. It's a little bit faster. I'm gonna turn to the side because I wanna show you something, okay? Pull the belly in. Here's what I want you to know about your body out of check what will happen when you go to pull your knee up if your other leg isn't fixed firm and firing at the glute when you lift your knee the body will kind of go like this i can't tell you how many times i see this in class and it's like oh my knee is getting to my shoulder but yet the whole rest of your body has lost its job pull 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 isn't it amazing so Peggy, I know you've got that mirror. Turn yourself to the side. Check your body out. Look at the knee extension on your straight leg. Push, 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 and then square yourself back up to the front. Shake it out. Now, you're going to weave just, just like that. We've switched tempos to get the heart rate up a little bit. Even if you want to stay at a lower intensity, all right? you can still move with a faster shake of the leg, right? So if your body is feeling good, then the shake of the leg actually feels like, um, like kind of like your, your hopping isn't the right word, but you have a more spring in the step. Where is your spring originating from? Some would say your knee but it's not, it's the strength of the foot that gets you off the floor, off the heel. So if you're being completely flat footed and trying to do a quick leg kick, you can only go so fast if you stay flat footed. If you allow your heel and your calf muscle and your feet right? To help you, you will have some lightness. Five, four, three, two, shake it out. I'm out of shape. That made me winded. Grab your lightweights. I'm not ashamed to say that. I actually embrace that. 
because I know that getting a little winded is exactly where I want my body to be. All right, here we go. So whether or not you're using any weight or just the weight of your arms, because the weight of your arms is still resistance, right? You are going to fly, fly away, right? Good body line, belly to spine. It's pretty quick. Your arms are not hyperextended. And most people, when they go to lift their arms, hold. They actually do overextend. And then their wrists, like the hands do something funky. So what I want you to do is just have a little bit of a softness at the elbow and from the shoulder to the elbow line, that is actually a lateral line to your body. So the hand on me sits forward of my elbow, but that's what makes it a true lateral raise. Five, four, three, to take the arms, sweep them up, pull the legs up, pull. Remember the feet, prance, 10, nine, belly to spine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, relax, bring the arms down because they should feel very heavy. It should feel like if you could just take the arm off the body and set it down to the side, that's what would be good. Balance on one leg. What does it take to balance? A lot, frankly. The leg that you're standing on, straighten it, take your butt, tuck it. And tucking it is actually just aligning it. Take your shoulders from right to left side, create space. Lengthen the neck. So that's called stacking your parts. And then you're going to take your other leg. And I want you to tip the foot up to tiptoe, tiptoe, tiptoe. And in that amount of time where the toe, right? Because if you can barely balance, then your foot tap might actually be a little bit faster. But the slower you can do the other leg raise will make sure that you're actually spending time in a balanced state. And if everything is going along nicely, then stop. Take your arms, turn them out, shoulders down, tuck your buns, pull your navel in, keep pushing your shoulders down, extend the arms up, 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 pause, straighten your extended leg, oh, hold five, four, three, two, relax your parts, jog, 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 prance, whatever you want to call it, move around your space, your, I want you now to feel like your body is loosey goosey. So we're going from two very different commands to the body. Loosey goosey is actually hard to get to as well, right? So here we go. Walk yourself back to your place, shake it off, tell your brain, you can do it. Switch to the other leg. All right. Tucking buns, navel to spine, trunk is long without your body being compressed through that rocked back shoulder line. Getting your shoulders depressed and your navel in, okay? The stacking of your body. The stacking of the body will be hugely impacted by what happens right under the crease line of your rump. So a lot of people get a stiff leg, but their hips are projecting. All right. And so then they've got collapsed spine. You want to pelvic tilt. Now you ready? You're going to take your other leg and you're going to start your little toe tap. Toe tap, toe tap, right? Are you doing a fast toe tap? Because you can barely stand 
on the other leg, wherever your position is. And even as we go through the next level of taking the arms up, if you can never get your leg to the stable position, then you just keep tapping your toes. But if you can go harder, hold the leg up, raise the arms up, belly to spine, extend the lifted leg without collapsing the standing leg, right? Hold five, four, three, two, release. So if you actually were able to get your uh, extended lifted leg, or I should say lifted leg extended, you may have felt the quadricep muscle on that lifted leg, okay? Shaky, shaky, you work around your space. Maybe you're marching instead of prancing, right? And now, relax. Do you have your core twisty board? Do you have your hula hoop? Maybe you don't wanna use any of those things. Do you have a jump rope? Maybe you just wanna do marching feet. Today, I'm inclined to pull out the hula hoop. So, hula. <laughs> whatever you're doing, maybe it's just sitting down, taking a break, right? If you have stairs in your house and you're like, I'll just go climb my stairs. Do you have to climb all the way up or could you just do the first step up, up, down, down and stay rooted on the base of your ground, right? And then just use the first step. Here we go. Push, pull, push, pull, push, pull, push, pull. Whatever you're doing, I want you to think about your body, the effort being a little bit uncomfortable for you. So if you're doing steps, go just a little bit faster than your body naturally wants to do. If you're in hula mode and your legs are really far apart, close it together. It's going to make you work harder. Your body's going to have to figure out this like, oh, how do I do it with my legs together? Right, five more. If you're on your twisty board, bend your legs, hunker your hips down a little bit and go faster. Five, four, three, two, and cut. Whew. All right. Moving into your next um, movement with weight. So I'm going with one eight pounder. Maybe you wanna use your three or your five. You're like, well, what are we doing? And that'll tell me what I wanna do. So we're gonna be doing single leg deadlift. Ready? The other leg, you've got options with it. And just for the sake of my chair is right here. I think sometimes what happens when you, when you think about single leg, if you hear the term single leg and you immediately go, gosh, my balance isn't good. That's like a negative imprint you've just put on your, um, this confidence thing, right? It doesn't leave you feeling capable, but when you know you've got your accessory, whether it's a wall, a ball, a chair, a stool, an ottoman, it doesn't matter. Single leg movement doesn't have to be a discouraging um, challenge for you. So pick your leg, just for the sake of demonstration, I've got my chair here, okay? Hopefully you know that deadlift is long spine action and it's a hip hinge, all right? Now, it might be that you don't want to get to the version of single leg stance, right? But you can take your trailing leg, just put it back there a little bit and still do the rest of the movement, right? Because right here in single leg stance, that might also be the challenge. But what if you had your leg back behind you, right? and you go into your really clean form of hip hinge, and then your hand finds your chair to give you the extra support that you need so that you can then raise the leg and get the feeling of being supported, right, and in control, and then put the foot down, stand up, take the hand from the chair, squeeze the bun. 
some of you don't need all of this assist. You'll be able to keep your leg off the floor, foot off the floor, leg pushing, your body and hip hinge, and you don't need the chair. Pull up. And if you get here and you still don't need the floor, then pull your knee up. Here we go. Push it back, extend the leg, hinge forward, use the chair or not, raise the leg like someone's pulling your toe back to the wall behind you. Pull yourself up, get up, get up, get up, get up, squeeze the bun, bring the knee up if you can, you've got one more. The leg tracks back and you fire up your derriere if your foot's not on the floor. And then you soften the knee on the front leg position. Your spine stays long and that's why it's called tabletop spine because, excuse me, as I turn my head and talk, tabletop spine is a reference of your shoulders and hip being on the same plane. Pull yourself up, bring the knee through, Squeeze the bun, release and relax, set your weight down, shake it off. You should have felt the stance leg should have felt like, oh, it did something in the glute and something down the muscle of the back of that thigh. Shake, 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 prance. All right, so prancing is like a much cleaner looking movement than jogging, right? So jogging has you a little bit like gangly, dangling arms, like a little slouchy, but I want you to think prance, hold yourself up, tighten the buns, the leg that goes to extend itself. You, you're not even driving the heel all the way to full push point, but that's what it gets. That's where the prance comes from is you do extend the one leg, five, four, three, two, cut, walk around. Do you need to change what angle you're using your chair in to switch legs? I'm not, I'm just gonna switch legs, okay? So, and I'm switching hand weight over, okay? So how I reference this is the leg that's gonna be the stance leg, the opposite hand to that leg takes the weight. And there's a reason for that. There's always a reason, right? If you kept the weight along the same line as your stance leg, often what happens as soon as you start the hinge is the body gets cockeyed. And though you might still be able to execute tension, you're crooked. So opposite arm to working leg helps to correct cockeyed frame, right? Here we go. Pick your position, leg and arm, soften the stance leg, take the rear leg, put some elongated action to it, start your hinge. You don't even have to lift the rear foot. See the tight body line? And now we're in hip hinge, the hand gets to find the chair, right? And then raise the other leg. Can you lower your shoulders a little bit and square the hips up? It's a feeling. If you had a like a piece of um, sheetrock across your backside from the back of your head to your hip, would everything be sliding off of it? Or are your hips and shoulders square, right? That's what we're after. And now stand up, bring the foot to the floor. All right, decide if you can slide the leg forward. Can you pull the leg up? Maybe your chair is in your way now, I don't know. Here we go, push it back. Soften the stance leg, draw your hip bone, right, of the weighted side towards the floor. Elongate the trailing leg, pull yourself up, pull the knee up, stand firm on your working leg side. Here we go. 
hinge, use the chair, use the floor. I've given you plenty of options. Just try not to go cockeyed. That cockeyed position can be really deceiving because you can teach your body to go into cockeyed position and you feel like you're nailing it, right? You might even get to the point where you've got your leg lifted and you're balanced, but yet the missing link is that you're not activating knee extension and glute firing on your stance leg. Two more. It's complicated. It's specific, right? push the leg back. You could flex your foot, square the hip. Your shoulders are retracted and depressed. Pull yourself up, straighten your stance leg, which is really hard to do. There was a time when I was doing yoga, switch, uh, not switch. Um, this is your last rep. Okay. I got my story mixed up here. So there used to be a move in yoga. And uh, I'm going to show you because it's really, it was one of the things that challenged me the most. Come up, pull up, finish strong. You might even feel. So in a movement like that, your body will reveal to you the weak link beyond it being balanced. So in a movement like that, at the end of the fifth rep, what I was feeling was actual fatigue in my foot because the arch of your foot on single leg stance has to maintain a position in order for the maintaining of balance. You're done with your weight. Just set it down for a second. I want you to think about what is your next little bit of cardio going to be? Are you going to do your twisty board? Are you going to grab your hula hoop now? Are you going to jog in place? I think I'll go with the jump rope. Right? You can do your imaginary jump rope, right? You can even do back to basic jog. I know I've got to get off the carpet though, because it's, it's, uh, it's not even, so it throws me off. Okay. If you had an imaginary jump rope, right? Um, I've also used my, the red band. Now, most of you don't have the ceiling uh, to do this with an actual jump rope, but they do make those little um, fake jump ropes that have about three inches of rope on them. And this is what I've been learning with my rope is because I want to actually improve my skill. And I showed you this last time. Okay. And you're like, well, that wasn't successful. I go out on the dock and I get myself in a position where I'm doing things with this accessory, right? It's because I'm talking, I'm not into my rhythm. I'm trying to get in and out of my rope, in and out of the rope. It's a coordination thing. And so even if you didn't have a rope, this seems silly to imagine you could use one of your red bands, right? How hard is it to navigate an accessory because it's timing, right? So do you have to have an actual jump rope or could you just pretend like you had something and you're like, okay, how do I get into it? Jump, right? Tell yourself, when am I going to jump? When am I going to jump? Jump, Chris, cross, Chris, cross, get ready, spread the hands, jump, cross, 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 spread the arms open, jump, five, <laughs> spread the arms, four. And so this is remedial, three, and are like, but it's the first time I've done something like this. But yet this is like basic, basic, last one. And yet it takes skill. Set your jump rope down. So even if you didn't do that with me, I hope you were jogging in place, being entertained by the story, right? Get your little Eric's pad, grab a little drink. I brought my uh, lemon water down. Okay, you guys, I've been trying something for the last few days and it's harder to apply 
when I don't have my um, session at six o'clock in the morning, when I have my session at six o'clock in the morning, I can delay my coffee because I don't even think about it. I just go to my session and then I have my coffee when I come back. But on the mornings that I don't have my session, I want to get up and just run down and brew my coffee. Except with the last little bit of information that I've gotten, there is the suggestion that you should actually delay your caffeine upwards to 90 minutes after rising. Switch lead leg. This is just allowing us to regroup into pattern and togetherness because we're gonna, whether you're on your Eric's pad or not, or you're using a big pillow, we're getting ready to go into the next movement, which is gonna require our weights. And we're gonna be doing squats from our little pad. So stop, pick the dumbbells that you wanna use. Now, as our classes go by, I will come back with the specifics. It's like, you know, when you hear something a couple of times, it's like, okay, well, that makes sense. But yet you still don't, you still don't have the precise words to share the why it would make sense, okay? Our bodies are such machines, okay? We don't normally do like squats from this position, so it might feel weird. Your cushion is probably putting your feet a little bit closer together than they would be if you weren't on the cushion. So that first and foremost is going to change the feeling of your squat. But while you're looking down, you're going to see me, right? If you're watching me, slightly turn my toes out. And that's because I know that since I can't do wider stance, okay, that this is the only way I can get depth to my squat. And even as I get to catch a glimpse of myself in the screen, it doesn't look fluid the way that it would if I had my feet a little bit further apart there's nothing wrong with like me doing a less fluid movement or a tighter leg position squat. I just want you to know that if your squat feels limited, okay, it is because your feet are closer together than they normally are when you do this. And when we sit on the chair and do squats, that is an entirely different body mechanic line because we know that we've got something to sit down on. So our shoulders tend to be in a different place than this free squat. Your weight, it slides down. So my thumb slides down the side of my thigh. And when I get just about at the knee, that's pretty much where I stop. That's because I just can't go any deeper. If I went deeper, it wouldn't be because my hips went deeper. It would be because my body went to back work instead of leg work. So I know that I need to stop at my knees, down, squeeze, down, squeeze, five more, four. And your pillow or your Eric's pad, two to go, the different feeling for your footing, release and relax. It's all a sensory awareness to your body. You can move that out of the way for a moment. Think bicep curls. All right, hammer time, elbows. Need to stay drawn in towards your ribs. And if I was with you, if we were in a room together, and I saw that every time you went to pull your arm up into curl, your elbow pulled away from your body. What does that mean? Do you want to know? First of all, I would verbally give you the cue to 
you know, roll your shoulder blades back and depress them and try to keep your elbow pulling in towards your rib. Now, just because someone hears the verbal cue doesn't mean that the execution of it then gets cleaned up. So the next teachable aspect is to put an object between your elbow and your side body that you have to squeeze as a teachable thing because when you go to lift the weight and the object drops out of the space, you're like, oh, I really am cheating. Now, sometimes we cheat because one, we're not engaged mind to muscle, and two, we're using too heavy of a weight to actually execute properly. So if you find yourself where you don't feel the inside of the elbow connected to your body throughout the entire range of motion, then at some point you are relying on the wrong muscles. Five more. You can walk around your space for three two, and then we're all going to practice that little yoga move that I said was really challenging to me. <laughs> Release and relax, set your weight down. All right. Here's what I want you to know. In the event you already feel challenged with your balance and you look around your space, you're like, okay, I have a wall, I have a door, a door frame, something that I can uh, lean against. I'm just for the sake of, for the sake of visual. Okay. I'm going to go lean against the wall, but then I'm going to come off the wall and get closer. So if this is you find your wall, your door frame, something that you can put yourself against. Okay. And then stand on one leg. Seems simple enough. So what I want you to do is soften the leg that you're standing on, and I want you to bring your lifted knee and your torso together with the intention of taking your hands in an interlaced wrap somehow. Once you get under your foot, interlace your hands. Oh, my goodness. Okay, now, you there with me? It's crazy, right? So now you're going to straighten the leg that you're standing on, right? That leg doesn't actually want to stay straight. You have to command its extension. And at that point, when your leg is straight, then you're going to start straightening the other leg. Oh. All the while, it doesn't matter if this leg gets straight. What matters is that the other leg stays actively straight, okay? And here's where your body and your mind, right, start having a little fight. Can you pull your hip from the wall and still get your leg that you're standing on to stay straight? Five, four, three, to release your parts, walk it around. Now, if you say to me, I couldn't get my foot. That wouldn't surprise me. It's hard enough for me to get my foot. <laughs> and I don't consider myself Gumby. Don't worry, we're gonna do the other leg. Take yourself back to your space. I'm gonna do my other leg but I'm not gonna use wall support and it's not gonna be pretty. I already know it's not gonna be pretty. That stretch in its most correct form, the leg would be out at 90 degrees to the body and the body would be completely vertical. Is that not crazy? So I'm gonna try it. I know I've got good balance, Take yourself, stay back there, right? Get onto the other leg. I bend into it so that I can get the two halves of my body nice and tightly together. All right. And then before I try to start straightening the leg that I'm holding, I've got to commit to the stance leg. 
extension, which is really hard to do. And now I would be better served to not try to extend my left leg, but to keep trying to straighten the stance leg. So if you're here with me and you're on the wall, try to extend the other leg. And while you're extending it, stand firmer on your stance leg. Five, four, three, two, release and relax. Walk it around. When I show you these things, it is not a proving ground. It is to drop a seed into, and yet there's still more that we can do physically to be challenged. And yet all you're doing is trying to work with your body. Okay, you're gonna grab your mat. We're coming into, a side lying position, grab a little drink. <laughs> and I'm going to be taking another little swig of my lemon water. But the delaying of the coffee or caffeine, right, upon rising is supposed to actually eliminate the midday slump. Isn't that shocking? Now, in the first day since I can even remember when, even though I'm down and I told you guys, I, did, I told you guys to come down sideline, but I didn't tell you to grab your weight. So what I want you to do is to grab one of your light weights and one of your regular working weights, okay? Because we're gonna do some shoulder work. Yesterday, based on my schedule and my desire to delay my coffee, I actually totally forgot to drink my coffee. <laughs> and then I, so I had my Zoom class, I went and I played pickleball, I ran errands, I shopped and I got home and I, so we're side lying and your bottom arm is out from under you. All right, so I've got my little head on a towel, maybe your head's on a cushion. We want our head supported in a way that keeps the neck neutral to the rest of our spine. That's why we use a cushion. All right, so your working arm is just closing the book and opening the book, but opening the book to vertical, not to pulling back because that's too far. All right. So that's so much more than what I just said. Okay. As you go to open the book, imagine that there's a little bit of resistance on the muscle. And so you need to grip your weight firmer and you need to slide your shoulder blade back and soften the elbow in order to really recruit the rear delt. So at the high position, the arm is vertical, but it is not hyperextended because we want to be able to squeeze the scapula. Ready? Stretch. Bending arm, squeezing the shoulder blade. If you can't feel yourself, glide your shoulder blades into the middle back pinch, then that means that your arm is hyperextended and your shoulder isn't tracking in its depressed position. All right, stretch, squeeze, belly to spine. I want to, I just said belly to spine to put you right here for a second. So sometimes when we get the scapula contracted, all right, we then arch the back. So now stay with me on that thought. Pelvic tilt your hip line a little bit and squeeze the shoulder blade. Those are hard to get in the sideline position. You're ready? Stretch the arm. Start raising the arm with the intention of gliding the shoulder blade back, sliding it into place and pelvic tilting and release. Now, bottom arm hugs the body. Top arm, put it on the floor. Pick up the top leg. Top leg and top arm are going to get you 
up and down. Ready? Push the leg, drive the heel of the hand into the floor. Maybe you end up leaning and leveraging on the bottom elbow to get you all the way up, right? Inhale, exhale, push, inhale. At some point, you want the bottom elbow to leave the floor so that the load is now in the top arm. Tuck and press, there's four. If you don't need to pump with this leg, keep them together. It's harder, right? So the leg actually helps you. If you're struggling, add the leg back in. Inhale, exhale. I like to add the leg because one, I don't like to struggle. And two, it feels more rhythmic. Last one, push, stay up. Sit here for just a moment. back to the coffee. There is a molecular reaction to the caffeine and a molecule in the body that when consumed upon rising actually creates a byproduct that by the time the byproduct gets through the body, it creates that midday slump. Is that not fascinating? And what most people do, spin around to the other side, that is generally when most people then go and remedicate. They don't consider it medication, right? By having another caffeinated beverage, but I can't tell you how many years because I heard this thing. <laughs> so I've never been a big consumer of most things. I'm a moderate consumer, right? So many, many years ago, where are we starting? Could, do you remember? You're closing the book, opening the book with your subscapular glide. <sighs> I just want to make sure that your arm doesn't end up behind you, right? You want to think stop at vertical with the shoulder blade pulling away from the ear and into the middle back. And oh, by the way, from your stop point right here, you should be squeezing whatever you're using as your weight and pulling your belly in. Now, inhale down, exhale, pull. All of these little tidbits of information that I've taken from things that make sense to me, ultimately, it, it sometimes I should say it takes years for the complete puzzle to be put together. Because when you hear one little tidbit, that's not the whole picture. That's just a little segment of something. So many, many years ago, I heard that dosing caffeine, right, in order for your body to actually like utilize it and for it to not really be considered like mega dosing, right? Because I hardly consider one cup of coffee a mega dose, but yet I didn't want to over consume a product. So how that works through your system is about a seven hour time frame. And so I used to have my coffee first thing in the morning and then like clockwork, about seven hours later, I didn't think anything of it. I didn't consider myself an over consumer. And I didn't really consider myself, this is your last one, release and relax. And I didn't really consider myself like a caffeine addict. I convinced myself, <laughs> there's the word, I convinced myself that the act of having a cup of coffee in the afternoon was like an it was a treat it was an enjoyable thing all right so because I get up so early and have always gotten up so early you know when I have my coffee at six or seven o'clock in the morning and we do the timeline of 12 hours excuse me seven hours later that would put me coffee time around one two o'clock in the afternoon Right. And that's just long enough away from bedtime that I didn't feel like the caffeine would actually have a negative impact on my sleep. 
But then I was like, why am I drinking that afternoon coffee? So I weaned myself off of afternoon coffee and realized, oh, I'm, just, I'm good. <laughs> to the point where then I got really proud of myself for just having one cup of coffee a day, only to find out that timing of the coffee is actually crucial, release and relax. So it's not about abstaining. It's about the timing of, of if you're going to ingest something, all right? Can you train yourself to enjoy it just as much at a slightly different time than what you had conditioned yourself to intake it? And that's the experiment that I'm on now. And I just thought it was really funny that yesterday in my quest, we're just sitting here for a second, in my quest to delay my gratification of coffee first thing in the morning that I completely missed it. And then there was a point in my afternoon, right? After I ran all my errands and came home, legs in front, that I almost convinced myself, well, it's not too late to have that cup of coffee now. But I was like, what am I thinking, right? Here we go, open and close. And it wasn't what am I thinking that that's going to impact my sleep. I was more like, I've just proven to myself that I can go without coffee and not get the withdrawal headache that I've conditioned my thoughts to buy into. I've convinced myself that if I didn't have my coffee in the morning, that the withdrawal headache is so intense that I didn't want to subject myself to that. So I would rather just keep drinking the coffee. Is this not like crazy? And <laughs> these are all of my own thoughts. Like this is a, these are thoughts and conversations that I don't have with Rich. Like it allows me to bring like information, content, entertainment to you to our classes but no wonder why I spend a lot of my day going like sometimes I'm exhausted and <laughs> I'm exhausted are you getting it it's quad strength can you believe that all you got to do is pick your leg up adduction is happening right pick the leg up abduction is happening it's crazy right internal and external obliques are working right your body's embraced position five more <laughs> and four and it's just your little leg and what if your leg is now sliding because you can't actually pick it up three that's okay two release and relax shake it out so you know we've got our little ql we only have a couple more minutes so we got to maximize it right hip walk bun walk pick up the leg right if you cannot get your leg to completely lift off the floor at the foot, then you just bend it and you drive it back because that's still a great position and muscle work for the body. But if you're really, really intense on working harder than get the leg to completely lift, the less bend the leg has, the more work the quad will do. And it might immediately seize up on you. And then you'll have to roll over on your belly and stretch it out, right? Because <laughs> mine immediately seized up on me when I went to stiff legs. Push, pull, push, pull, and now relax. So I did tell you that you needed one of your heavier weights and we're gonna do something with it now, okay? You're back on your back. This is a combo move. And even though you just saw me put my little pillow there, that's out of habit, not out of need. So you don't need your pillow. You're, and the reason why we don't need our pillow, can anybody guess it? Why would you not need your pillow? You're like, because we're getting ready to do bridges. That's right. And when we do a bridge, we don't need head support because our lifted hips put our neck into the right spot. So do your best position to tuck your shoulder blades down, settle in so you feel your neck get as neutral as you can. Your feet are about hip width apart. You're gonna take hold of your dumbbell. And now I want you to hold the fat ends of your bell. Now ready for this? Pelvic tilt. 
give me just a little bit of a bridge. All right. Which should help you get your neck even more neutral. And then you're doing your skull crusher. All right. So all that means is that we're doing triceps. And you want to look at your elbows. And as your arms bend, if your elbows pull away from each other, you need to stop. Restraighten your arms. Imagine that your insides of your elbows are squeezing a ball. And as you bend your arms, don't let your elbows pull away from each other. Work your feet closer together. You ready? This is a build on. You don't have to look at the screen. Just stay focused on hips lifted. The legs are closed together. And if you have the strength to do a little bit more, I want you to take one leg off the floor and reach it forward. The arms are still going. And five and four. Oh yeah, three. You just fired up the glute on that working leg. Now hold the arms up, switch the feet out, get them close together and then extend one leg. The hip is maintaining bridge position and the arms are gonna pump for five, four, three, belly to spine, two, give me one more. And now hold the arms up, set the foot down, set the hips down, keep your low back flat, spread the feet. And can you put one hand on the stem of your weight and take the other one away? So the arm that's got the weight is going to do its chest press. All right, you're gonna bring the tricep and elbow towards the floor and then push it back up. And if your arm bends and it tracks down next to your torso, I'm so okay with that. So long as the hand rotates palm towards the trunk, right? So if you're pulling the arm wider, right? It's at a comfortable angle. And if you're opting for a rotating hand and the elbow next to the ribs, that's two different movements, okay? It's a rotation push, right? Push now. Get up, hold the arm up, switch it. Be careful. That arm is up. Turn the palm away from you. We didn't prime the shoulders, right? But we're going to do uh, priming on the side. Push the knuckles towards the ceiling. And now glide the shoulder blade to the floor and then bend the arm. Push, glide, and bend. In this traditional chest press position where the palm is turned away from the body, right? It's facing forward. That might actually cause you shoulder um, discomfort. And if that does, then you're going to turn your hand palm in towards the midline and lower the elbow close tracking to your trunk. That might be all you need to do to lessen any shoulder strain and make you feel comfortable with a chest press. All right, squeeze the buns. Get a very low level bridge. You've got five more reps. Inhale down, exhale, push. Inhale down, exhale, push. All right, two more. Push, push, push. Push, push, push. Release and relax. Set that off to the side. Roll yourself to face down. You're going into modified cobra and then full cobra. And that's what we end with just to get out of this and off the floor. All right, you're settling in. Remember, as we transition from being on our back to being on our belly, it takes a few seconds for you to get all of your parts in place. So don't rush the push away. Elbows are in a full um, support position. Hands are wider than the elbows. Drive the arms to their full stretch. If that doesn't feel comfortable to you, then move the hands forward a little bit. Try to take the tops of your feet, push them down into the floor, squeeze your buns, holding five, four, three, two, elbows down, walk the elbows in. 
and in a nice fluid movement, the hips raise, the elbows pull back, you transition to your hands, you stub your toes, you drive your hips back, the heels load with bent legs and you roll yourself up. Full inhale, exhale. You are free to roam. <laughs> okay, you guys. I hope you have a fabulous 